Good morning. And a happy Easter to you and uh, lots of great greetings uh, as will as will happen during the service. We'll be greeting one another with those great Easter greetings. Um, but I pray that you all experience something special this morning. Easter is such a, a wonderful time. We, we often miss it uh, in the busyness of everything. Um, I know many people do. But I pray that you don't this morning. I pray that this morning is for you a, uh, what can I say, a meeting with the resurrected Lord in, in such a way that it brings resurrection into your hearts as well. Uh, so may you find that uh, to be your experience this morning. Let's begin. Why do you look for living among the dead? He is not here. He has risen. The Lord has risen. He has risen indeed. Hallelujah. We sing our first hymn. Jesus Christ is risen today. Lord is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. In baptism, your old sinful nature was buried with Christ when he died. When God the Father brought him back to life again, you were given this wonderful new life to enjoy. To remind ourselves of what happens at our baptism, we speak words that were spoken at our baptism. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In Christ is our hope in this life only. If Christ is our hope in this life only, we deserve more pity than other people. But now Christ has come back from the dead. Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor miserable sinner, confess to you all my sins and iniquities with which I have ever offended you and justly deserve your punishment now and forever. But I am heartily sorry for them and sincerely repent of them. And I pray you of your boundless mercy 
and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor sinful being. Upon this your confession, I, by virtue of my office, as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God to all of you. And in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If Christ is our hope in this life only, we deserve more pity than any other people. But now Christ has come back from the dead. Hallelujah. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Glory to God in the highest. Lord be with you. Let us pray. O God, you gave your only Son to suffer death on the cross for our redemption. And by his glorious resurrection, you delivered us from the power of death. Make us die every day to sin, so that we may live with him forever in the joy of the resurrection. Through Jesus Christ our Lord who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We have the readings for the day. Our first reading for today, Easter Sunday, is written in chapter 25 of Isaiah, beginning at verse 6. God will prepare a banquet. On this mountain, the Lord Almighty will prepare a feast of rich food for all peoples, a banquet of aged wine, the best of meats and the finest of wines. On this mountain he will destroy the shroud that enfolds all peoples, the sheet that covers all nations. He will swallow up death forever. The Sovereign Lord will wipe away the tears from all faces. He will remove his people's disgrace from all the earth. The Lord has spoken. In that day they will say, Surely this is our God. We trusted in him and he saved us. This is the Lord. We trusted in him. Let us rejoice and be glad in his salvation. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our second reading this morning is written in chapter 10 of Acts, beginning at verse 34, a summary of the life and ministry of Jesus. Then Peter began to speak. I now realise how true it is that God does not show favouritism but accepts from every nation the one who fears him and does what is right. 
You know the message God sent to the people of Israel, announcing the good news of peace through Jesus Christ, who is Lord to us all. You know what has happened throughout the province of Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John preached. Now God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power, and how he went around doing good and healing all who were under the power of the devil, because God was with him. We are witnesses of everything he did in the country of the Jews and in Jerusalem. They killed him by hanging him on a cross. But God raised him from the dead on the third day and caused him to be seen. He was not seen by all the people, but by witnesses whom God had already chosen, by us who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one whom God appointed as judge of the living and of the dead. All the prophets testify about him that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. This is the word of the Lord. Gospel this Easter morning is written in chapter 16 of the Gospel according to St Mark, beginning at the first verse. Christ has risen. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James and Salome, bought spices so they could go to anoint the body of Jesus. Very early on the first day of the week, just after sunrise, They were on their way to the tomb and they asked each other, who will roll the stone away from the entrance of the tomb? But when they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had been rolled away. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe sitting on the right side and they were alarmed. Don't be alarmed, he said. You are looking for Jesus the Nazarene who was crucified. He has risen. He is not here. See the place where they laid him? But go tell his disciples and Peter. He is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told you. Trembling and bewildered, the women went out and fled from the tomb. They said nothing to anyone because they were afraid. This is the gospel of the Lord. In the waters of of baptism, your life in the Lord began. Once you were no people, now you are God's people. Do you believe in the triune God? I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated as we sing our next hymn, The Strife is O'er.
Grace to you and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Easter. This is it. Resurrection Sunday. This is what we're all about. This is the centre of our faith. This is where it all happens. This is the message that we want to get out to the world. He has risen. And we, want, we don't want to just get that message out. We want to apply that message. We want to say to people, he's risen for you. We, we want each person to experience that the grace of God, this, the love of God and the power of God which raised Jesus from the dead is living and active here now and applies to us, each individual person here and every person out there. Jesus died and rose again for you. And he wants to have an impact on your life. There's a, it's, we have great hymns, great readings, great everything on, on Easter morning. It's just a fantastic time of the year. It's, a, uh, it's the organist's dream. He can blast that organ if you're a bit concerned sometimes that the pipes are going to melt. Don't worry. The, the built especially for that purpose. It's a pastor's dream because this is the, it's the central message of the Christian faith. It's what we want to preach. It's, uh, it's the congregation's dream because this is the day that we celebrate our salvation. We come together and this is the ultimate. This is where it all happens. A fantastic reading. Uh, a bit I pulled out. And I didn't write where it was from, but I think it was one that uh, uh, Michael read just then. Surely this is our God. We trusted in him and he saved us. This is the Lord. We trusted in him. I think that was from the Old Testament reading. We trusted in him. Let us rejoice and be glad in his salvation. We trusted in him and he saved us. See, the, the Hebrew people built this. They built their nation on the Exodus, the story of the Exodus, the rescue from Egypt. They said, God who saved us, you know, the God of our father Abraham, the God who rescued us from Egypt, brought us to the promised land. That was their, their view of God. If ever they looked uh, forward and, and saw trouble coming, they would say, God who brought us out of Egypt, let's call to him. They look back at what God had done. And then when they, when they see what, and they pray to that God and a prophet comes along and speaks to them, speaks God's word into their lives and says either do this or repent or there's usually something like that. And, but then there's this God who saved you, this God who brought you through Egypt, this God who brought you across the sea on, on dry land. This is the one that we pray to. This is the one who will save us. He saved us before, he will do it again. That's the message of Easter, isn't it? We look back, we look back at the cross. We look, and we've got more to look at because, you know, they say the wisdom of hindsight is, has 20-20 vision. Well, we've got this clear vision all the way back to Adam. We've got a clear vision. We, we are truly blessed people. Because we can turn around and look back at history and look at all of the things that God did. And we are to believe. Believe in Jesus. Actually, that raises an interesting point. You know, when I was a young fella, I, I questioned that term believe because, you know, I, I grew up in, in the church. I was... Uh, Baptised at six weeks of age in St. Peter's Lutheran Church in Loxton um, and always was in the church somewhere along the line. And then something happened one night where I received a, a vision from God. I'm not going to go into that now, but it, it was an impact into my life. And I could see a God who was active, God who was present here today. And so I started to shift my language. I would, I would tell people, uh, I, don't, I don't believe anymore. 
And they go, oh, what? You don't, you don't believe anymore? Why? Well, because I know. It's not a matter of faith. It's a matter of knowledge. No, smarty pants. But it's an interesting play with language. But the word believe, has, it has a dual meaning. Mostly it's used, oh, I believe it's going to rain. You know, and everyone says, well, you're a fool, aren't you? Um, but, you know, I, I believe, you know, I believe that something good will happen. Well, it might not. I believe that I will get some chocolate today. Well, that's probably based on a fairly good assumption. Right? It's, but it's not certain, is it? All of that language, none of it's certain. It's all, you know, oh, there's an area of doubt in there. Um, the belief in the Bible, when it talks about believe, it's, it's an all-in kind of thing. You know, it's, it's I am totally committed to this way of thinking. It's different. And so we sort of need a, a bit of a nuance on that word. We need, a, um, we need something to add on to that or, or something to stretch it a bit to, to say, no, it's, it's beyond... It's beyond a, you know, a reasonable assumption. It's beyond, um, beyond belief. See, because it's based on evidence. We look back at what happened to say, this is what I believe. If you look to the back of this establishment, you see an open tomb. Right? We know that to be a fact. The tomb was opened. Why? Because we have the evidence. We have the, the scriptures are written and they are recordings of what people saw. They went there and they saw this stuff. They saw the empty tomb. They were surprised at the empty tomb. There was this guy sitting there. And so they told other people about it. Some people wrote it down. Not everybody wrote it down. Not everybody's writings have been recorded. We've got enough to show that, well, beyond all reasonable doubt, there was this thing that happened in history. And so we know the people of Egypt, the, the, the people of, of Israel were rescued from Egypt. We know that they were brought across the wilderness to the promised land. We know that they settled then. We know that... Um, that they developed, never really did properly what God told them to do. We know that because it's all recorded for us. We know that Jesus died. That's recorded for us. We know that he rose again from the dead. If you ever question in your mind that Jesus was truly raised from the dead, that he was truly dead and truly raised, and go back to the scriptures with a new view, with the idea of, I'm not just reading the Bible, which is, you know, a, a passed down story, I'm reading this record of events that happened back then, and they've been collected for me. So look at it as a book of evidence, rather than a description of our faith, because that's exactly what it is. It's a book of evidence, and when you approach it that way, it makes much more sense. Anyway, that's a little aside. We look back, we see the evidence of what God did. I want to take that a little bit further. I want to make another little language adjustment. Often we get together and celebrate what God did. We, we talk about what God did. We talk about uh, how that, and, and we may even say how that affects me. We need to shift that a little bit. You see, the word did is so past tense. We need to change it to what God is doing. I think that's a much more reasonable way to speak of God's actions. See, we look... We look back and we, we see in history, way, way, way back, we see 
the exodus, right? I mean, there's lots of other things too, but I'll just take these two things. The exodus. And people were rescued through the Red Sea, Red Sea pedestrians, and then they get to Israel, the promised land. Years later, hundreds and hundreds of years later, Jesus comes along. And we have Jesus coming, speaking about who God is, showing them who God is, showing them God's love, teaching them to wait, the way to live, and then dying on the cross. Terrible tragedy. But then conquering death by being raised from the dead by the glory of the Father. We can look back at that. If you, if you draw a line between those two things, those two events, you get a, a historical trajectory of things that happen. And you'll see at any point in history along that time the same kinds of things happening. All the way back to Adam and all the way forward to us. Not everything is written in the Bible. We, we worship a God who acts. And so what we see along that trajectory, along that line, that historical line of evidence, is the way God works. So we have this rescuing, grace-filled, grace-acting, resurrection God, working in our lives throughout history, working in us, working in our people, working at every step along the way in various ways. You know, you can go to modern stories, of, well, not quite so modern, but modern as compared to the New Testament, of the Reformation stories. You hear stories of, of pilgrimages from, from Europe to new lands. Uh, things happen, miraculous things happen in people's lives which which are stories of rescue and stories of transformation. All along that line. What we have is not a God simply who acted, we have a God who acts. We don't just have a God who rescued the people of, of Israel from Egypt. We have a God who rescues his people. We don't just have a God who raised Jesus from the dead. We have a God who raises his people from the dead. We don't just have a God who brought healing and teaching and grace and forgiveness to people whom Jesus met. We have a God who heals. We have a God who acts. We have a God who loves. We have a God who teaches. We have a God who leads us his people. You see the difference? We're not just talking about history. We're not just remembering here. We're not just celebrating. We're living the here and now because God is here and now. Don't just look back at a God without thinking it through. Logically, if God worked then and God worked then and God worked then and God worked then, I've run out of screen, then God will work now. Because there's nothing gone wrong with him. Nothing has changed about God. He's not old or sick. He's not dead. He hasn't retired. Nothing's changed. Still the same God. Still loves you. Still bringing resurrection power to people's lives. So I want to say to you, this Resurrection Sunday, look for what God is doing. Don't, don't just remember what God has done or did do. Look for what God is doing. Look forward to God, what God will do. He is calling us to a life of resurrection here in Gatton. He is calling us to, to see him working and moving in his people today. 
we will see him move and work among our people just as much today as they did in Jesus' day. You might say, well, I don't see that so much. Well, maybe we're not looking or maybe there's something wrong with what we're doing because that's what Jesus says. You will see this stuff happening. So I'm going to believe him. I choose to grasp the resurrection and look forward to what God is doing in our day. I want to invite you on a journey with me to see new life, to see new growth, to see our church flourish, to see new people being brought to faith, to be involved in the mission and the ministry of God's church and to see things happen today. Why? Because that's the way God works. Let's be involved in what God is doing. Let's be truly resurrection people. Why don't you join me? Why don't you join me on this journey? A fresh journey, a fresh history where we jump on the, on the trajectory of Christian history and rejoice again in the resurrection and experience the grace of God and resurrection for ourselves again. Surely this, our God, this is our God. We trusted him and he saved us. This is the Lord. We trusted in him. Let us rejoice and be glad in his salvation. God has done it. He's done it again. He's done it again. He will do it again. And may the peace of God, that resurrection power, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus, now and always. Amen. We're going to sing our next song now.
creating me a cl- came up here and faced the altar. I don't know if anybody planned this, but the Bible, which, you know, it's just there as decoration because we do other stuff, but it's open to, at the top of the page, he has risen. Did somebody plan that? Yeah, okay, that was intentional. Well well done, nice touch. Uh, Let us pray that the results of Christ's resurrection may be seen throughout the world. Lord God, our loving Heavenly Father, we thank and praise you for the glorious resurrection of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Your Son, our Passover Lamb, has taken away the sin of the world. Forgive us and all people. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Your Son said, Peace be with you. Bring your peace to the world and to our own country. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Your son appeared to Mary Magdalene when she was weeping. Comfort those who are sad, lonely or grieving. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Your son met the women and asked them to tell the disciples about his resurrection. Guide Christians everywhere to witness to the resurrection in their lives. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Your son proclaimed himself to the two disciples from the scriptures and made himself known to them in the breaking of the bread. Reveal him to us and all people through the teaching of your word and the celebration of your holy meal. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Your son strengthened the faith of Thomas by telling him to touch his hands and side. Reassure those who are troubled by doubts and strengthen their faith in your goodness. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Your son conquered death by his death and won the victory by his resurrection. Be with those who are dying and lead them to life with you forever. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, grant that all who now celebrate these joyful holy days here on earth may finally praise you forever with all the angels and saints in heaven. We ask this through your risen Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We sing our communion hymn, Draw Nigh.
The Lord is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. We welcome the presence of our resurrected Lord in this sacrament. Death has now been changed to life. The Lord is my strength and my song. He has become my salvation. The same power that raised Jesus from the dead is available to us. We are Easter people and we gather around our Lord's body and blood to shout our alleluias. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord. It is truly fitting and right and for our lasting good that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, O Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. But most of all, we praise you for the glorious resurrection of your Son, the true Passover Lamb, who has taken away the sin of the world. By his death, he has destroyed death. And by his rising again, he has restored life. And so with Mary Magdalene and Peter and with all the other witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and with all their creatures, we adore and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and singing. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. When he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take and eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. The same way he took the cup after the supper and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink of it, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. you to come and join in the feast uh, we don't come to remember Jesus we don't come or not just to remember Jesus we don't come just as a celebration of something past 
we come to participate in something now. This is why he said, this is my body, this is my blood. It's, uh, it's here and now. Let's participate today in the ongoing rescue, the ongoing miraculous experience of the life of Jesus and the actions of God in our life. Come for all things are now ready. rise for the blessing of the body of our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ and his most precious blood strengthen and preserve you in body and in soul to life everlasting go in peace Amen Let us pray. Heavenly Father, you gave your Son to die and raised him to give us eternal life. Grant that we who have received his body and blood may live in him and serve you as your children. We ask this through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favour and give you his peace. Amen. We sing our final hymn.
Good morning, everyone. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Um, a very blessed Easter to all of you guys um, from us here at Peace Lutheran, uh, from the leadership team at Peace Lutheran Church. We trust that you have a blessed Easter, uh, whether you celebrate that with family or friends or by yourself. We just trust that this is just going to be a blessed time uh, for you guys today. Um, we don't really have any real announcements this morning, apart from our services continue uh, next Sunday um, at our usual times of 8 a.m. and 10:30 a.m. Um, I'd just like to thank, uh, also, just like to thank everyone who was involved over this Easter period with with doing whatever it is, whether it's musicians leading, um, it's people setting up displays down the down uh, the back there, which look fantastic. So a big thank you to everyone who has done anything over to prepare for this Easter season. Um, we trust that you have a blessed, uh, blessed week this week, and uh, we'll see you all again soon. I'll hand over to Pastor Rob. Thanks, Phil. Uh, I seem to have a wife approaching the front, so uh, I'll hand over to her. Good morning, everyone. I'm out here today to advertise something new, um, and this is... Um, I guess a kickoff event for our new women's ministry that we're starting here at the church. So this is for women of all ages and uh, our women's ministry program has, we have started to, to plan it and think about it. Uh, we have um, a very dedicated little team of Lynette Logan and Jan Rome, Vanessa Thompson and myself and we've gotten together and had a couple of meetings to talk about various bits and pieces. We don't know um, like a full program yet, but we are praying about it that God leads us in the right direction because we think that is really super important. But to kick it off, we're going to have a Mother's Day afternoon tea. Uh, it won't be on Mother's Day. It's going to be the day before, so Saturday. The and I didn't even bring my glasses. Can I my glasses? We share glasses. Get the date right, May the 8th. Um, so it's going to be at 2 o'clock here. We're just going to have it here in our church hall. We were thinking of going out, but we thought, well, why not use our own facilities? And it's free. Uh, it's going to be an afternoon tea. And we're going to have some delicious treats, and there's going to be little gifts for the women, and we're going to just have a nice time together and also just have a little chat about where we think women's ministry could go in the future. Um, I've also got on here to RSVP to me. It's got to be important for catering purposes. I've got my phone number, my email address. Um, and I've also got at the bottom to please contact well, well me or, or one of the other three women that I mentioned if you need assistance with transport or babysitting because we don't want anyone to miss out um, on, uh, because of one of those two reasons. Uh, we've got little flyers printed today so that you can claim this date. Lynette's got some down the back and I'll go down the back as well and we'll give them out to you as you, um, as you leave today. Please take one. Uh, please uh, pop this on your fridge and seriously think about coming. We really want to get this um, mother, uh, women's ministry started with a bang so we'd love to see as many people as possible. There's lots of room in the hall so we're looking forward to seeing you on that day. So, yeah, just keep an eye out on your emails as well. So we'll send some emails and put something up on our website also for anyone who can access things electronically. Uh, Pastor Rob. Turned off. May God bless you all this weekend as you celebrate the risen Lord and as you look forward to him working in your own life, the life of our church, and see what he will do as far as rescue and salvation in the life of our community. God bless.